Hello, this is Lord Chocolate, and welcome back to another Minecraft Redstone video for the first time in a long time. This is going to be uh, just an occasional series that whenever I just randomly come up with something. But this is Redstone Theory, which, out of the different Redstone videos I'll occasionally do, it will be about more complex, like proof of concept, not super applicable to normal survival worlds. I mean, you can almost certainly find some uses for some of the things I do, but they're not, like, super useful for the general survival user. But today I'm showing off, uh, basically, within reason, infinitely expandable, uh, set time peer like, what is it, seven redstone tick, uh, or fourteen game tick adding machine, that binary adding machine, that no matter how many bits you add, you're adding, it's always the same amount of ticks. Basically, I do that by merging instant logic gates with the normal logic redstone logic gates so that the carry function parts of that would require longer amounts of time if it was just using normal logic gates the more bits you added but if using the instant logic gates that are based off of logic gates from pi something 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 i'll leave a link to his video in the description or in the end screen but these uh, instant logic gates with the pistons are based off of stuff that I saw in his video, but he made an instant 8-bit adder that, like, is completely instant. I did not want to do that because the if you make it too big, it could probably get a little laggy and also lots of pistons in space. So this is really good for, like, something like a computer where you want that you're building in Minecraft if you want to have the output come at a, like, in one, like it goes in at one time and comes out exactly that amount of time later and you don't have to worry about making sure all the input, all the output comes out at the right time because it'll always come out at the right time. If you were just trying to make a basic adding machine that didn't really matter if there was a few random pulses or the output didn't come out at exactly the right time or at ex exactly the same time, then there's a lot more simple designs. I was working with some of these. I'm not sure if all of these work, but uh, this one looked, at least looks really nice. I think it would work if you had just a a longer pulse output, I'm mean input and just, but it would not be perfect for this type of situation. But without further ado, I'll do a demonstration and then show you how to build it basically. And it's after the first two bits, it's basically infinitely expandable in the same way. So, um, let, first thing to let you know is these command blocks do not do any circuitry things. They just tell, they were used for helping time the thing. So it's like time query game time. So that gets the time in game ticks, which is a 20th of a second, while redstone ticks are a 10th of a second, at the end of the... Uh, thing and then I have just it saying say one to tell you which inputs I mean which outputs fired because you don't really know from the game time which out specific output it was so this one's like say two this one's game time two etc 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 and over here is a game time for the beginning so I can know the difference and figure out how long it takes so here is just a pulse shortener, and I adjust for testing, and I tested it by changing the inputs. So here it should have one, each output should go at exactly the same time, right after the input. So, that, okay, so let me get that up. So here the 784 is the start, and then here's the 798. And all of them were at 7.98, so see it works. And then, yep, so it basically adds all of those. I'm not going to get too much into the details of exactly how all the things work. I'll like all the logic gates put together, I'll tell what logic gates I'm working on, but probably you'll need a basic understanding of redstone for this video, unless you just want to copy what I've done. But um, then let's see. If we do this, then none of them should go off because it'll carry all the way up and overflow. So see, it just is the input one, but nothing 
comes out of the other end. And then like this one, it should be not the first one, but the second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. So, so two, three, four, and five, but not number one, because number one carried. And so forth and so on. And this one, none of them should go off, I think. Yep. And I've done a bit of testing with it, but it's relatively compact, as much as I could easily do. And let's get on to making it. So I haven't gotten all the resources mapped out, but here's just a general thing. So I built it a little too low last time, so I think this should be good. So just going to build this as kind of like the esting the wire, and then each input, the two different things, numbers you're adding, there's, here's one bit from the first number, one bit from the second, and I think it's three spacing between, yep. And I haven't done too much testing as to whether this is directional, I think it would not be, but since it does use zero tick mechanics and stuff, and I'm not the best with those yet, so, uh, yeah. But just for the sake of proof, this is, oh, they've changed the debug thing or something, but yeah, this is the direction I'm facing, so, um, yes, there we go, and let's finish putting this together, so need repeaters on these, because they power a block for redstone d dust to pick up, and redstone dust cannot pick up a redstone dust powered block, so let's get this, this is an XOR gate, which is basically made by combining a, a NOR and a AND gate, and it's for determining whether it's for determining whether whether it's just one of the inputs. Because if it's just one of them, then it definitely has an output, unless it, at least for the first one. If there's another one, then you have to also check if it if it if there's both a carry and just one of these. I'm getting confusing now, but basically this. When you're adding these two num bits, if both of them are on, it carries, so there's just a zero coming out. But if one of them's on, you actually have something come out on this bit output. So, just a little bit of binary for those of you who have not had experience in that. But let's get on with this. I'm going to assume that, I'm going to try and assume from now on that most people watching this have some basic binary knowledge. But here's finishing up the... XOR. The first bit is the simplest. So, um, here's the carry for the first bit. And I'm going to make this slightly different from the other one because the other uh, function or the other design I didn't do quite the way I like it best. Or I didn't do quite a uniform way for the first bit or two, so I'm trying to make it into a more repeatable pattern. But yeah, I think this is all you really need for the first bit and a little bit of delay, so just extending this sum so it's more similar distance. But okay. add some delay. I think it's three, but it might be two. Yeah, it's three. So that it'll be the same delay as the rest of the gates. And then here's the. Let me see. I'm gonna, yeah, for the carrying fun. Well, I'm first gonna make the XOR for this one. Ex XOR means exclusive OR, so that means only one or the other, not both and not neither. So. But after this one, I should be basically done, and the, it just keeps repeating and repeating. Hooking up basically the same way, just a little bit more dense after the first bit. So. Oh. There we go. And this thing, I believe the shortest pulse you can do is a four tick pulse using a pulse shortener. 
because if not if it's faster than that the pistons will do some weird stuff i'm not sure if that could be avoided but just for the sake of uh simplicity i have avoided using trying to learn even more fast and difficult things but okay getting a little ahead of myself okay now i'm going to work on the carry fun the more complex carrying so the idea is if this if the if this one carries so there's a carry output and this one has only one of these go through so there it should be a one output but there's also a carry so when those are combined it'll carry and leave a zero even though it would normally just be a one if you were just doing one xor so the idea is to make the carry here instance so that it gets to the so that it doesn't have to flow down the entire chain and to compare and the comparison of that yeah to the deciding whether this needs to carry here so this function the second bit and further on can carry in two ways one way is if both of these are on so this carries or one way is if the carry from the previous one is on and only one of these is on so the output of the first set logic gate combined with the carry results in another in a carry and then there's just empty here and i'm getting rambly again but okay here is the an instant not design Uh, this is one that I sl did some major adjustments. It's the same basic concept, but I did some major changes from the one that's displayed in pi, uh, whatever's pi. I, it's like pi and then the number for pi with slight, like one inaccuracy. Not sure if that's intentional, but okay. This is just as a constant power source. It's not like unnecessary. It's not really that necessary for main functioning. I need to refresh myself a little bit. Okay. Yep. So. Right. Here. And I think it goes down one. Yeah, I haven't built it enough to have it completely memorized. So, two, three. And I think it goes up one, then up two, and then down one. Yeah, and then over, oh, up, over, or over, over, over. <laughs> so it kind of zigzag. Ah. Sorry if I'm kind of flying around a lot. Okay. Well, this should get easier when I... I'll come back to this in a little bit. Because I won't need to fly back and forth so much if I... But here's the other knot. Or this is making an instant end, basically. So by combining three instant knots in the right manner. Ding. There we go. And I think that was how I did it. Yeah. So basically, when this thing, the way the knot works is like these instant knots work is they break the circuit instantly when the timing is set right. Or when they receive an input. So, okay, this torch is part of the next XOR because you have to have two XORs for the future bits. The first one to determine whether the original inputs uh, 
result in an output. And then the next one to determine the combination of the original input and the carry, whether that means that there should be an actual output. Because this is like the output of the original two bits added. And then this is the output of the carry from the previous bit and the original two bits added is the next XOR. But I, okay, I'll finish this and first. So this was just, a, no, there we go. That, and that, and that, just for placing. smooth and simple and I think it goes up yeah one more over and then back 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 up because you don't want to quasi power this piston because if you power the block above it it'll cause issues and then And just keep going back this way and come by. I think I didn't go over far enough. What was that? Again? Okay. So I go over there. Did I not go up far? Am I still? No, I went back too far. That's what it is. So it just goes back to here. Because and right here, put the carry for this function, or this one, like the carry, if this these two bits result in a carry. Go. I think you might be able to see how this is kind of repeatable already. And remember to put that there so that this isn't constantly carrying. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've got the carry function for this setup. So now I have to go back and make sure the output's right. So I need to make sure the combination of the carry and this so th there's only one of them resulting in resulting in a output or else then or if both of them are on then it should just carry again. So I need to take the carry from right here. Let me see, what did I do right here? I went it around above it. Oh yes, and I need to replace that with this, just for the sake of space. I could probably do it in a slightly different way, but that was how I decided to do it. So basically this slab is here to make sure the redstone can go underneath it like the wire can continue on. Some reason I think I did not go yeah, I didn't go back far enough. My mistake. There we go. So this is not supposed to be there. There we go. And then you put that there, that there for the taking the carry function and making sure the delay is right. And make sure it goes down through there. And right there it is. Yes, right here, I put redstone torch right down on And that powers that, I believe. Getting a, just a little bit, okay, yeah. In bedrock, this wouldn't work because the, obviously the zero ticks, but also the 
uh, redstone, I think, automatically will attach to pistons. So, I mean, that would be useful in some situations and really not useful in others. So, I'm one of those guys that really doesn't like bedrock. Even though I never got super good at redstone in Java. I just like how you can do so much and it's not... And all the glitches at least make kind of sense. And then here's the and for the XOR between the carry and the output of this. And ooh, put that there. Might have taken that out too far. I think I did. Yeah, it just has to be underneath there. One, that, then that, then a stick of redstone torch here for the final knot in the XOR. Put redstone dust here for output here. Wait. Wait, it can do this. Okay, oh yeah, it goes up one. Yeah, my bad. Let me see. So, there's this here, and then there's a torch here, and then there's this here, and then that. Right? There we go. Yeah, and then this goes there. Yeah, I was wondering why it was causing that issue. Okay, and that's just for testing the output. Game uh, time query game time. And let's see. Let us finish up the XOR. So now that we have the AND in there, we have to put in a NOT, um, NOR. So we take this. Okay, we take. What is it? Yes, yeah, so we take the output of the this thing again and the carry and we find those and make sure that the NOR gate basically just it not what is it? It's basically as long as one of them is on, nothing it it's off. Yeah. And then when one of them is off when all of them are off then it's on so that goes there and here's the output of the nor gate there then yeah and then this goes back here to this thing that we did and then we kind of left behind What did we do again with? Oh yeah, was this AND gate just used the torch? For... It didn't use the repeater. So there we go, and I think that's it because you just repeat this design for the second bit, and you can see how it plugs in because you can see right here there's the two redstone dust here that connect it. Because this part is part of the next one, like it's not part of this one; it's part of this one. So. You can see like here the there's this output and the two redstone dust. So you can build the same thing right here off of that and these. So like you know, you'd put the torch here and then you'd put like the repeater and dust and then so on and so forth. And you know the rest. Because you've seen the rest of this. So basically repeatable very relatively easily not super spacious i mean it's a little bit big pretty useful let me do a little test run make sure i built it right for you and replace this with a command block and
gonna destroy these until because those are the ways I determine which ones are on and off when I'm testing. And here I build a pulse a simple pulse shortener. I'm gonna set it to four ticks. You can use a pulse shortener like this to send the initial signal into your computer or whatever you're designing. And okay, so for just this one, it should. Oh, I didn't put a command block on that one. There we go. So there we go. The the fourteen game ticks. So that's seven redstone ticks. So seven tenths of a second. Then with these two, it should carry. So. Yep, there's only one that goes off. That is again 14. And this one was the right one because this is the most recent output. And this one didn't do that output, obviously. And then we put one here, and none of them should go off, but there should be a carry. So keep an eye on the corner of the screen right here where that redstone is. As you, it was very faint, but you should have seen that it lit up. Like As yeah, you can see that it lit up if you look closely. Hopefully, the YouTube video quality maintains that, but and only the original one right here outputs. So, and then. If this one is here, then only this one should output, and there should be a carry. So keep an eye on the... Yep, it carried a little stronger that time. And that one was... And it did the 936, so prove that this one is the one that did 936, yep. And this one did not have anything in... Oh, yeah, yeah, this was lagging. So, yep. And that was still 14 ticks, so 7 redstone ticks, so it's consistent, and it keeps doing that, as you could see in my other my original one, as you add on more bits. I'm not sure how many bits you'd it, it have to ha add for it to the instant logic to start lagging it, but it would have to be a decent bit. I'd, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, so, hopefully this was useful and could be used for some redstone designs. As you can see, I've spent a lot of time trying to design something like this, but hope you enjoyed, and I hope you find it useful.